Republican House and Senate leadership slow walking the Trump agenda on taxes and Obamacare, patients wearing thin in the House. The Congress and Senate went on recess while President Trump and the White House were hard at work preparing a budget, tax cuts, and a new health plan the president says could be ready by the middle of next month. So we're doing the health care to get moving along very well sometime during the month of March, maybe mid to early March. Uh, we'll be submitting something that I think people will be very impressed by. House Freedom Caucus Chairman Congressman Mark Meadows says voters may send Republicans packing next year. That is, if House leadership doesn't follow through on the president's agenda on the budget, tax cuts, and the repeal and replacement of Obamacare. Leading conservative Congressman Mark Meadows is our guest tonight. Also, President Trump dispatching his Secretary of State and Homeland Security Secretary to Mexico to meet with President Peña Nieto. The president obviously looking for a responsible partner in the leader of Mexico on the issues of border security and fair trade between the two countries. We take that up with the dean, Republican strategist Ed Rollins, here tonight. Shame on you! No shame! And Republican lawmakers facing angry protests in their home districts. President Trump today suggested these demonstrations are the work of left-wing activists trying to agitate constituent crowds. Our special guest tonight is leading conservative former senator and the Heritage Foundation president, Jim DeMint. Good evening, everybody. President Trump tonight hard at work delivering on his campaign promises while congressional leaders remained on recess over the past week, slow walking his agenda now, and the president meeting today with his budget officials working on tax reform, the repeal and replacement of Obamacare. I want the American people to know that our budget will reflect their priorities. Health care is moving along nicely. It's being put into final forms. As you know, uh, before we do the tax, which is actually very well finalized, but we can't submit it until the health care. And the Trump administration also hard at work on a revised extreme betting order that is now expected next week. A senior administration official telling Fox News that order will implement a temporary visa ban on the same seven countries as the original order. But this new order will apparently drop the indefinite suspension of specifically Syrian refugees, instead calling for the temporary suspension of all refugees from any country until those nations put in place background security tests that meets U.S. standards. The new order also expected to explicitly exempt legal permanent residents and other visa holders. A lot to take up here with our guests tonight, including Ed Rollins, Jim DeMint, Nigel Farage, Mike Gallagher, Mark Simone, and my first guest says Americans demanded a full repeal of Obamacare in November, and the process to repeal and replace should be moving faster. Joining us tonight to talk about the congressional leader's slow walk of the Trump agenda, the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Congressman Mark Meadows. Congressman, good to have you with us. This is, uh, this is stunning to watch the pace uh, at which President Trump is working and moving on executive orders, moving on the, the Dakota Access uh, a, a pipeline, Keystone Pipeline, uh, putting uh, forward his nomination for the Supreme Court, I, and then to see what Messrs. Uh, McConnell and Ryan are doing, uh, it's a little, it's a breathtaking gap, isn't it? Well, it is. I think, Lou, the, the interesting thing is the president is working 24-7. Congress needs to get up to speed. Uh, we promised a full repeal of the taxes, the mandates, Obamacare. And uh, we've already put that on President Obama's desk, so I don't understand what's holding up the vote, why we don't go ahead and put at least that on President Trump's desk. We've got to catch up to his work ethic, and the time is now for us to go ahead and not only put a plan out there, but be specific about that on what it means to the American people. Speaker Ryan might say that he has put forward a specific plan, Ryan Care, if you will, uh, but uh, moving, uh, moving a, a, a proposal forward was Senator Rand Paul. And as I've looked at that proposal, it makes more sense than anything I've taken a look at. What is your reaction to that plan? 
Well, obviously, Lou, we support uh, Senator Rand Paul's plan because it really puts the focus back on the patient and gives uh, the patient the ability to use their health care dollars the way that, that really they, they should be the ultimate arbitrator of how they do it. Now, the Ryan Care plan that you just talked about, you know, I guess they're still rolling out the specifics. We've yet to right. see any legislative text. But really, when you start to look at it, we can't just replace the Affordable Care Act with something that that is just like it, but just a different name. And so it's important that we push back on, on anything that doesn't really reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, and I know the Freedom Caucus stands with me in endorsing Senator Rand Paul's plan, and we believe a, a repeal needs to be voted on right away. And, and a founder of, uh, a founding member of your caucus, the Freedom Caucus, is Mick Mulvaney, the new director of the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, we're looking at, the, uh, uh, watching as the president in his first month is already discussing budgets. Uh, he's discussing his priorities. He's talked about whether it's health care. He's talked about the importance of competition uh, among states uh, to provide health care plans. Uh, the director Mulvaney is going to have a lot to deal with here, uh, particularly if the plans are not not uh, marked and scored uh, as uh, as well absolutely sustainable uh, and practical. Well, and I can tell you, uh, uh, Mick Mulvaney, the new OMB director, not only a personal friend, but someone who understands the numbers. And as he looks at those numbers, it was interesting. President Trump said something in, in that lead up uh, to this interview was that if we don't get the Obamacare repeal and replacement done, it's holding up tax reform. It's holding up infrastructure. It's holding up a number of other things. So they're all bunching together. So it's incumbent upon us to not delay any longer, give the real specifics of what our replacement plan is all about and act accordingly. And I have good faith in the president and his new budget uh, OMB director, and hopefully we'll see uh, some real responsible policy that comes from that. The president, <coughs> excuse me, the president saying that he will have a health care plan forward by the, he believes, uh, the middle of next month. Uh, with Ryan, uh, we have heard all sorts of uh, varying and uh, different targets over the course of the year. Uh, there is time for action right now. This president is a man of action. Uh, and the leadership in the House and the Senate right now appear to be, well, not acting uh, as one would expect, given the leadership being provided from 1600 Pennsylvania. Well, we, we've got to follow his lead, but we also may have to make sure that we put in place something that we can debate. We are not even the, debating the specifics yet, Lou. And, you know, when we look at uh, po potentially a new entitlement program, sending that to the president's desk and one of the first major actions would be for him to sign on to a new entitlement program. I don't think so. That's not what my constituents want. It's really not what the American people voted for on November 8th either. It isn't, and uh, as you describe it, uh, signing on to an entitlement program would do this president no favors. In fact, it would be a betrayal, in my opinion, uh, by the House and Senate leadership to put him in that position. Uh, so is there a prospect here uh, for closer coordination amongst those who are responsible in the House of Representatives and understand that this president was elected to pursue his agenda uh, to the repeal and replacement of Obamacare tax cuts, not 20 percent border tax increases, as is proposed uh, by Ryan and Brady, uh, but rather to follow the lead of this president. Well, we need to not only follow the lead of the president, I will say they're reaching out in a real way to members of Congress, not just on the House side, but on the Senate side. Uh, we're seeing an interaction from this administration uh, that, that I haven't seen in the last four years. And it's really about uh, critical components, you know, what matters to the people that you represent back home. They want to get it right. But the other thing is, is this is the land of promise. There's a lot of promise that happens in Washington, D.C. with very little action. It's time that we make sure that we follow up on the action to support the president. 
There's a little swamp draining to be done, isn't there? There's a lot of swamp draining to be done, but sometimes when you're in the swamp, it's hard to recognize where you are. And so uh, as I've got some good friends back in North Carolina reminded me of that, yeah. it is critical that we drain the swamp and get it right. There's an expression that has to do with crocodiles and alligators and a part of the anatomy that I won't uh, uh, bring up here tonight. <laughs> uh, Congressman, thanks so much for being with us as always. Congressman Lou, Mark it's good Meadows. to be with you. Good to see you. We're coming right back. As you can tell, we've got a lot to cover here tonight. Stay with us. We'll be right back.